Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. In case you don't know me, my name is Jorim Sears and I'm a student in electronics and ICT. And one of my many hobbies is 3D printing and designing. So, as you all know, I just started out doing YouTube and to give you a better experience, I bought a little microphone. Just the one you can clip on your shirt. But the only problem is I always forget they're stuck on my shirt. So what did I do? I designed a little stand, just like you can see right here, to clip on the microphone and put it neatly in front of me on my desk. So the goal today is, is to design a little stand inside Fusion 360. I recently did a similar tutorial inside Autodesk Inventor, but I feel like the most of you are using Fusion 360 because it's more accessible for the starting app maker. Anyway, let me know, do you prefer Autodesk Inventor or Fusion 360? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that said, let's go. So we get an empty document right here inside Fusion 360. If you're ready, we can start modeling our little stand. We'll start off by making a sketch for our base. This base doesn't need to be too big because the mic isn't that big either. Let's draw two circles. One with a diameter of 60 millimeters and the other one with a diameter of 50. This will give us a wall thickness of 5 millimeters, which is more than enough for this application. So once we have our sketch ready, we can then extrude our base by clicking the extrude button in the top toolbar and selecting our sketch. We will extrude this 5 millimeters. And now our base is ready. Now comes the tricky part though. We want to extrude a little part of the circle upwards, but under a 60 degree angle, because this way it's more stable and a lot more pleasing to the eye. Alright, so now we can go ahead and create a sketch on the top of our base. In this sketch we can create a footprint of the part we eventually want to extrude. We will draw two lines on the circle, both parallel to the x-axis. Once you have done this, then you can give it some dimensions by hitting the D on your keyboard. This will bring up the dimensions tool. We will put 12 millimeters in between the two lines. Now we want to make sure they are both equally far from the x-axis. This can be done by selecting one line and the center point. Then you can take the total width, which is 12 millimeters, and divide it by 2. This will make sure the axis is in the center of the two lines. So now comes the second part of this piece. We want to create a sketch on the XY plane so we can draw a trajectory our base will follow when we extrude it. We will draw a line of 80 millimeters with an angle of around 60 degrees. Be careful though, you want to make sure your line is in the center of the two other lines we just drew in the previous sketch. So now that we've done all that, we can finally go over to extruding. For this you want to go into the toolbar on top and instead of the extrude tool we normally use, you want to hit the drop down menu and look for the sweep feature. Once you have this open you can click on the base you want to extrude and then click on the select pad button on the tool and select the pad you want it to follow. Right now we only have a straight line under an angle, but this is a really powerful tool when you're making some more complex stuff. So make sure you remember this for your future projects. So right now when you look at it you see that it's a little too wide on the top, especially if you want to clip your microphone on there. So we're going to use some chain first to smoothly reduce the thickness on the top of the part. So let's go up in the toolbar again and select chain first. If it's not there you can find it in the drop down menu below. Once you get this tool open you want to select one of the corners on top and then go into the tool and change the chamfer type to two distances. This will give you the ability to fully customize your chamfers. I will make mine 2 mm wide and 50 mm long. You can do the same and do this on both sides of the part. Alright, so this is starting to look great, but I would like to make sure when I clip my mic on there that's at least a little bit secured. So to do this we will create a mounting cylinder on top of our part. So let's start a new sketch, this time on the side of our smaller section and draw up two circles. One will be 7 mm, the other one 10. And with the coincident constraint tool we can line the two, align the outer circle up with the corner of our part and give it a height dimension by pressing the D on our keyboard of 3 mm. Now we can go out of the sketch and take the extrude tool. We'll select our sketch and make sure we extrude it as wide as our part, which is 12 mm. Make sure you select join so you don't cut out the piece instead of adding to it. 
When we have done all that, we will add some support in the bottom corners where our base and smaller section meet. We will do this by again using the chamfer tool, but this time you can use the equal distance version. And in this case, we will give them a distance of about 10 millimeters. So we came to the second last part of our tutorial and as you can see the part still has some pretty sharp rough edges and I really like them smoothened out a bit. So I'm going to use the fillet tool in the toolbar on top and take away some of the sharpness. And by doing this the part starts to look way more pleasing and a lot more professional. Alright, everything is smoothed out and looks pretty neat. There is still one small feature I like to add though, and that is a hole for the cable of your mic to run through. And this can be easily done by creating a sketch on, in this case, the YZ plane. And by using the circle tool, you can create a circle to punch a hole in the back. I suggest you use the same measurements I did, as they are, per, in my experience, perfectly for a 2mm cable. And once you get the hole in, you're officially finished and I've created a little stand for your microphone. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you had fun making this Inside Fusion 360. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and maybe subscribing. This helps me out a lot. And if you have any ideas or products you want me to take a look at, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.